Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for Nerds, by Nerds, hang out with these nerds. Nerdarchy is Ryan, Nathan Nerdark. Today we'll be discussing character builds that win friends, influence people, and charm the pants off your adversaries. Drop down in the description below where you can find Nerdarchy the newsletter. Learn how to game with Nerdarchy as well as get RPG tips delivered right to your inbox. So we have we have a, a face character, a face man, who's going to help us um, not necessarily beat down the the, the opposition, but turn the turn the pants off of them and not really. Maybe you can start stop the fight before it even happens. Maybe right, or maybe you get you know NPCs to do what you need. Uh, you know, maybe there's certain tasks that have to be accomplished, and you know the face character can sometimes do it without resorting to violence, without bloodshed. You know, and also, you know, uh, cementing and creating valuable allies at the same time. Putting them in cement. I like it. Yeah. So, <laughs> obviously, when you're building a face character, you, your, your primary most important stat is going to be charisma. But at the same time, I feel like you wouldn't want to dump your other um, mental stats as well. Right. Because uh, yeah. you need good judgment and you need to be kind of smart, usually, to do yeah. it. Yeah. What's the point of being likable if you're going to say something stupid? <laughs> so, well, then you would be a zenith. 80% is how yeah. you look when you say it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but pretty much 90%, maybe, depending yeah. on the character, depending yeah. on how many dump stats you have. Yeah. So, so to accomplish this, there is actually quite a few charisma based races and classes that you could go to. Right. I mean, you have Lightfoot Halfling, you have. Half Elf, which is the. Bar none is the most superior race as far as face characters are concerned, I think. Yeah, they, they can do a lot. You have Dragonborn, you have Typhlings. Yeah, it is funny to think of Dragonborn as the sort of the charismatic, uh, charming race, but yes, yeah, it, it, it is, is a face character. And, and the, the Typhling is great because you are getting intelligence and charisma out of, out of them too, so mm. that's great. That's good. And then you have, uh, no, is it Charisma and Dex? Because all elves get Dex. Um, no, I don't think there's an elf that gets a charisma bonus. Uh, Just the half elf. Uh, yeah. For some reason, I was thinking... Well, what did Drow get? It was the Drow. Yeah, I, I, I even think... Isn't the half elf is they get the plus two the charisma and two plus ones, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 They're so, good for being able to do any... Because I mean, you get those plus ones, you stick them into your whatever your class is going to be based off. If you don't pick bard or sorcerer or something. And, of course, human can always do everything. So there is no big de deal there. Charisma, Drow. Drow. Oh, okay, there bitches. you go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Don't hey, question said, me again. I'll I beat you with the player's be. handbook. <laughs> no, I'm um, you up. Uh, and then, of course, like we said, humans can do anything. Uh, is there any other charisma base we're missing? There just seems like to be a lot of them that get that bonus to yeah, charisma. Oh, uh, Azamar, if you go yeah. into the DMG. Yeah. Uh, Which, they're very skin tiefling, so. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. You know, so I'm not sure about uh, the Skag and the. the um, the companion, you know, the companion book as well for the elemental pop clips. Right. I forget the name. Princes of the, of the princes of the apocalypse. Oh, the Templar's Temple companion. Elemental evil. What yeah, the new metal band? It, what it is? There's a bunch of things that kind of like float around, and I want to mix together. But it is uh, princes of the apocalypse. Player's companion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which you guys can find on. Um, <laughs> You can find on a drive through RPG. Drive through RPG, which I always want to call RPG drive through for some reason. They're they're just like doing drive by with with yeah. books. It's, it's free really... to download the PDF, so that's kind of cool. Um, all right, so that covers the races. Now we have uh, f for classes our, our class bard, options. bard obviously, but warlock does a good job, and so does rogue. Yeah, and and sorcerer if you want to. I mean, if you want to either augment yourself with magic or just have access to those skill sets. But Warlock, there's lots of sort of invocations that specifically speak to that as well. Yeah, I feel like the reason why I, I, I went with Warlock, uh, Bard, and Rogue is because they also have the skills. Mm. Now, I feel like if you're a half-elf playing a sorcerer, you, you have more wiggle room because you get you get more skills. A yeah. human, too, as well. Yeah. I think human gets an extra skill, so that would help. But the sorcerer is, doesn't it only gets two skills like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have your background. So, again, you, you've got four... You know, where if you were a half elf, you know, that's six. Or if you happen to be one of the other classes that get a lot of skills, you know, that bumps up quite a bit as well. Isn't, I forget where it is, but isn't there a rogue mastermind mm -hmm. archetype? The mar mastermind is in the Skag. Skag. Yeah, yeah, isn't that ridiculously good? We would say that they're really Hemsworthy good. Hemsworthy would have been yeah. that. Yes. We, uh, he is that. We, uh, okay, we, we, it. we, we re skinned it or re, re readjusted because it made a lot of sense for the character. Now, I'd say the so, benefit of. Sorry. Oh yeah, no, I was saying yeah, mastermind absolutely. Uh, we, we did mention 
Rogue. Yeah, so Rogue, yeah, Rogue with that. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is that they get a lot of feats. And I feel like if I was going to build uh, a face character, it would be based off of a lot of feats. Mm. Uh, I think and, I'm a fighter. They get the most feats. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was looking, I was like, it doesn't say you've got to pick fighting feats. Mm. No, no, you can pick anything. You can pick anything. It's, it's only like, one more than the Rogue, though, I believe. So. Yeah, that's yeah. why I was thinking the Rogue Mastermind is definitely a better pick out of it. Uh, so while you're talking, oh, I would also while we're broadly talking about classes, honorable mention, especially if you don't play by raw, but um, some iteration thereof, the Enchanter Wizard, because you can make friends, yeah, <laughs> make, and, and, and but, make them in, be influenced. Yeah, I mean the the real problem is as written, the Enchanter sucks because everybody knows that you uh, mess with their mind. Yeah, you got to wait till like what fourteenth level or something. Like that's a so, one effect. Yeah, so that you're actually good at the thing you do. For yeah, the whole once you once you've mind raped them, they always know. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it does kind of nerf your ability. Like it, it's a one off. You can't go back to that person because they're not going to like you after you've fiddled with their mind the first time. Basically, you may well just be a charlatan uh, wizard enchanter because like running your scams, you may as well just keep traveling the realms and never go back to the same place ever again. Or you always use a different identity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which would be really good to uh, pick actor with that as well. Actor's just really all good, all around good for a feat. For, as far as um, a role playing heavy feat. Oh yeah, yeah. So, are there any other feats that you would uh, that you're thinking of for for the face build? Uh, yeah. As soon as I find the feat section, like there's like, keen mind. There's... I know how to use this book. I swear. Yeah. Oh yes, keen mind was one. Of them. Linguist uh, is also another good one because uh, if you can't communicate with people for the cost of a feat, it, is, actually, it is expensive. You can you can just kick up 250 gold and learn a language and it not is, spend a feat it, on it. It is expensive. Yeah. I would agree. The I, time requirement is. I tough. would hire thing. tutors. That's really <laughs> yeah. what it comes down. Yeah. To. If you if can, you I get got, tutored around the clock to make if this happen not a wizard you'll be able to afford it yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah um the other the skilled feat if you just want more access to more things and yeah there's that as well yeah so especially to the um any of the classes that don't get a particularly good amount of uh feats um or i mean skills, skills yeah skills, yeah well so you know going with that but then again like you know cube if you go human or half elf and you actually play a class that is skill heavy mm. you really don't you don't really need the extra skills so much yeah you, you pretty much have it covered at that point you're going way out of the realm of the face yeah which is fine if that you know if that's the character you want to play and i know this is an overall just great feat but lucky yeah. because you can take the t most terrible situation and try and convince someone that it's really just fine. super advantage yeah, yeah. super getting super advantage <laughs> being able to roll three dice and pick the best <laughs> my character farts so i can get disadvantage <laughs> yeah. and now i'm going to use lucky and make it super advantage yeah. <laughs> yeah. and you know i would think that a lot of the fun of using that the feed ability is how to figure, spin it yeah how, how does spin. how do you spin this to make it seem like yeah this makes sense that he got really like he's got the luck yeah. Uh, so whether you go, if you go bard, I don't feel like your archetype matters all that much. Mm. Um, no. no. Uh, I feel like either Fey or Fiend works better for. Great old one is just like no the Cthulhu -y thing. Like you're, you're usually kind of, kind of leer odd and off putting. So I don't think. That's yeah, but I feel well the, the fiend, both the fiend and the fae both have abilities the that complement. Yeah. Uh, co complement the face character. Yeah. Like uh, what is it? Devil's own luck is an extra die ten that you get to add in I think once per short rest or long rest or whatever it is. And so that's probably one that's kind of beguile. Yeah, they get they actually w one of their first level abilities is like related to charming people. So yeah, well, that, that's the fae, yeah. The fae yeah. Fact. Well, also, so the thing about the great old one is they do eventually get a thrall ability. <laughs> so you kind of just like yeah, you know, I'm just so charming that I do enthrall people. <laughs> Making friends and influencing people one person at a time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's kind of cool. So you could you could take it that route and just be like, you're one of the people that happens to not be like, uh, who's the actor that's kind of like had had the big goggly eyes and was always kind of off putting and weird. Not like Vincent Price, and then there's that other kind of character actor. Are you, are you talking about like uh, Steve Buscemi or no? Uh, like this is somebody back from like the, the black and white film sort of thing. Um, I can't remember the the actors. It's name. not coming to me, man. Yeah. 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 Anyway, but anyway, like, cause, not happen. Because like that's that kind of character who's kind of like Renfieldish is not the person you want to be as the face character. No, like, you need that's, somebody that's like the anti face character. Yeah. You need yeah. somebody that can like really turn the pants off of people and maybe still be a sociopath on the other side if you wanted to go <laughs> play that character. 
And uh, one, more, one more feat on the topic of feats. I would say inspiring leader doesn't make you better at the mm -hmm. face character but it makes you like a more complete face character it, ma like. it makes sense yes yeah. it, uh, it gives you know more uh it makes you more useful more utility yeah so all right so we've thrown a bunch of things out there what about backgrounds like obviously yeah. the charlatan wait, wait, is i want to make an honorable mention for if you wanted to play an atypical paladin who's not optimized again another sort of face character sort of thing mm -hmm. but with like a divine sort of emphasis no, that, that actually does work. I mean, a paladin would make an excellent diplomat. So and cleric, cleric too, because you're really good at spreading the faith if you're uh, face oriented, mm -hmm. outward facing. Yeah. Again, like as long as you go with like the half elf for the human, uh, it'll it will it'll make up for the deficit of uh, skills. Yeah. The and, and not only that, you, it also lets you put them where you want them. So yeah, yeah super helpful. So so that does help. Although the paladin with the actor feet. Yeah. <laughs> well, but here's the thing. Just because you're a paladin doesn't actually need, mean that you happen to be a paladin of a goodly god or the most virtuous yeah. god. It just means you get to kick ass for Well, especially whomever. in this edition. Yeah, it just means you get to kick ass for whomever you want to worship. Well, you know, that being said, like, that does kind of give me the idea from the Oath of Vengeance paladin mm. that kind of, like, works undercover a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so that totally, like, the, the, totally the face aspect would totally work yeah and and so, you could do like an assassin's creed sort of thing like that was kind of like a holy order assassin sort mm. of thing so the vengeance it kind of does work well yeah there used to be a class the uh was it inquisitor the, uh, in that the, was like the holy assassin yeah well and that exists um there's an inquisitor and pathfinder as well yeah um, it was there, in third edition there was a third edition for eberron that had come out as well so they're both of those things well exist. no there was the um so there was the Inquisitor, like Eberron, but that was like a detective type character. Mm -hmm. But then there there was also a different one in third edition that came out at some point where it really was like, and it was also in Pathfinder. Um, essentially, essentially, it was like the Holy Assassin type right. character. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so they're, they're definitely in there, and that's definitely a possibility to go a bit uh, darker. But what, I kind of like when I think face character, I think of. Uh, face from the A-team, you know, yeah. that's like, that's my quintessential <laughs> yeah. face character. Right. You know, he knows a guy, he's got the contacts. Um, or like Chevy Chase from Fletch, where he just, or even um, Axel Foley from uh, the Beverly Hill Cop movies, where he just yes. kind of like fakes his way Through into, situa yeah. into situations as well. So would Criminal be a good background? For there, there's several. The Charlatan's yeah. a good one. Definitely. And Criminal is certainly not. Criminal, criminal is a good one. Noble opens yeah. doors, yeah. so that's yes, definitely a good true. one as well. Yeah. I like the night with the alternative of of the retainers um just because it's like shows that like you have this following of these cosmic yeah you've people. already got a line of people yeah. who want to talk you to you have an entourage yeah. if you want to have them yeah i find that that's a that's a really tough call only because the the noble's ability to get oh, the noble see people is fantastic is, yeah. is really good for yeah. that type of character as well we also have entertainer that's that's a sure uh thing to yes to yes take uh, well. you know you, you went through the trouble taking an actor why not yeah. you know yeah, for sure. And entertainer opens doors as far as, like, uh, you know, tavern doors and getting free night stay. It, well, yeah, but I would actually extrapolate that to like you're you're actually better. You have better access to the common folk, mm -hmm. and, and you know, infiltrating and talking to those people. Where the the noble is the other end of that, where you're, you know you're on the high end of things. Well, yeah. I would say as a both as a noble and as an entertainer, you can get access to influential people. Yeah. You're just not necessarily on the best footing. If you're not that, you'd have to be pop. You're either popular and a noble's like, oh yeah, I want to talk to you because you're the new hot thing yeah. in the area, or you're just another noble, so it's easy to contact them. So I'd say both of them can get you in the door. It's just where you're going to be sitting. Right. Well, so you're next deal. to them or performing across the way. Yeah. Here's the deal: the the noble can talk to the king. Uh, the entertainer can talk to the guy that talks to the king when he hires the people to come in and entertain. Yeah. And then you can assassinate the king. Or entertain him so much he wants to give you much lugress and money and all kinds of good stuff. Lands and titles, yeah. Yes. I mean, that, actually, that's what happens in stories. Yeah, right? or you're actually a bard who's, like, doing mind-manipulating, like, a suggestion spell or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enchanter with the entertainer background. Or, well, no, you could do sorcerer and you have a suggestion spell, and then there's the one that, um, there's the meta magic feat that 
doubles the duration. So for 16 hours, the king thinks it's a great idea. <laughs> whatever. He <laughs> lands in table titles or whatever. <laughs> long um, enough for you to cash stuff out. Get Black out. Joe, Jack and Blow yeah. for everyone. Yeah, as long as the things can like change hands really quickly, like because then you get the things, sell the things, and head. But in 16 hours, the buyer remorse is going to be it's horrible. Going to set in. And then it's <laughs> yeah. gonna be off your head. Wars start over this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a fantastic villain. I'm into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he, it's like a charismatic warm tongue. Yeah. Yeah, he just moves from kingdom to kingdom doing that. And we're like, yeah, oh, you know. There, there would become, like, a, whatever the character's name, it's like that grift. It's just called that. Like, yeah. after uh, that yeah. character. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like the, what, like Ponzo's, the Ponzo scheme? But like a Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme? Yeah, but Ponzi like, scheme. yeah, whatever, whatever the character's name yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Duke and King since. Yeah. So. You guys, what do you think? What is the ultimate face character in your game? How, tell us about the characters you've built. And or the how, best scams or grifts you've pulled off. Absolutely. But put it in the comments below while you're at it. Like, share, and subscribe. You can check us out over on Facebook. You also join us at nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy. Face character or face man who's going to help us um, not necessarily beat down the, the the opposition but turn the turn the pants off of them and not really maybe you can start stop the fight before it even happens maybe right or maybe you get you know npcs to do what you need uh you know maybe there's certain tasks that have to be accomplished and you know the face character can sometimes do it without resorting to violence without bloodshed you know, and also, you know, uh, cementing and creating valuable allies at the same time. <laughs> Pretty much 90% maybe, depending yeah. on the character, depending yeah. on how many dump stats you have. Yeah. So, so to accomplish this, there is actually quite a few charisma-based races and classes that you could go to. Right. I mean, you have Lightfoot Halfling. You have... Half-Elf, which is the bar nuns and most superior race as far as face characters are concerned, I think. Yeah, they, they can do a lot. You have Dragonborn. You have Typhlings. Yeah, it is funny to think of Dragonborn as the sort of the charismatic, uh, charming race, but yes, yeah, it, it is a face character. And, and the, the Tifling is great because you are getting intelligence and charisma out of out of them too. So mm. that's great. That's good. And then you have uh, no, is it charisma and dex? Because all elves get dex. Um, no, I don't think there is an elf that gets a charisma bonus. Uh, Just the half elf. Uh, yeah. For some reason, I was thinking, well, what did Drow get? It was the Drow. Yeah, I, I, I even think isn't the half elf is they get the plus two the charisma and two plus ones. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds. Hey, oh, these nerds. Nerdarchy is Ryan, Nathan Nerdark. Today we'll be discussing character builds that win friends, influence people, and charm the pants off your adversaries. Drop down in the description below where you can find Nerdarchy the newsletter. Learn how to game with Nerdarchy as well as get RPG tips delivered right to your inbox. So we have we have a, a f same time putting them in cement. I like it. Yeah. So <laughs> obviously, when you're building a face character, you, either your primary most important stat is going to be charisma. But at the same time, I feel like you wouldn't want to dump your other um, mental stats as well. Right. Because uh, yeah. you need good judgment and you need to be kind of smart usually to do yeah. it. Yeah. What's the point of being likable if you're going to say something stupid? <laughs> so, well, then you would be a zenith. 80% is how yeah. you look when you say it. Right? Yeah. <laughs>